Welcome back to the Part Spin Podcast, everybody. Uh, I am MSEP. I'm here with Ezreal Yay. again. And- Yay, we're back. And today we also have a special guest, uh, Mitch Henry. So um, if uh, you guys have probably have seen his stuff already, if you are familiar with us, you're probably familiar with him because he's been around the scene for a while. But today in our episode, we'll be talking about two topics instead of just one. We're going over stuff related to BioCup this year and in previous years. And we're also going over revamps. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good fun time. So, Mr. Mitch, you wanna you wanna just give a quick introduction to people who may not be familiar with the stuff you do? Uh, sure. So, um, like I said, my name's Mitch Henry. I um been doing Bionicle Mox. I mean, as long as I can remember. I joined Flickr in 2016. About 2017, I pitched the idea of bringing BioCup back from mock pages and onto Flickr. Um, and it's been going ever since then. And yeah, that's about it. I didn't know that. I, I, I knew it popped back up in 2017. I, I didn't know what the, I guess, the cause of that was. That was interesting. Like, Yeah, I, I pitched it, and then some other guys ran with it. And I mean, I was involved in the first year of, like, the judging and, like, hosting and such. But it wasn't until probably, like, 2018 or 2019. Perfect. Well, that that's right. a great segue into our first topic, which is, as you mentioned, about BioCup. So I guess uh, for those who, I, I'm pretty sure most of our listeners have, are familiar with what the BioCup is. We want to just give like a very brief description about what, what the tournament's about. Sure. Right. Um, BioCup is a uh, annual community-based Lego construction building contest. It's a tournament-style single elimination. So, you know, every two weeks... Uh, there's a new theme, and it goes in rounds, and then it just keeps going until one person is declared the winner. I am curious now that uh, you've mentioned some pitching, uh, I guess, restarting BioCup. Uh, did you participate in it when it was on mock pages? Because that is well before my, my time, so I, I didn't really see any of that. I actually don't remember. I think I did maybe one time, but I I really don't remember. I think once. I don't know. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. I, I've heard a little bit about it here and there, just people reminiscing on it, but I'm, again, that was before yeah. my time. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely back in the time when, like, uh, the people who, like, were really prevalent on, during the Mock Pages era, like, um, Brendan and Callan and Gringat were really the, some of the main people, like, participating in the events. There are probably more who used to do stuff on Mock Pages, but now they, like, either transition over to Flickr or they're just not into, like, construction stuff mm-hmm. anymore. But I think it's... Um, it's pretty interesting. Um, would you say that the the format for BioCup compared to the uh, the mock pages and the Flickr era is like very different, like uh, compared to each other? Uh, yes and no. I mean, the fa- I mean that it's still like a single elimination bracketed tournament competition. That's kind of the same, but it's some of like the minor details that are different. Because um, in twenty seventeen, the we just like took the rules and ported them over to Flickr, but then that didn't really work out super well in some places because the format of mock pages allows you to do multiple photos on one page, but in Flickr, you're going through like one image at a time. And one of the rules was like, you needed to have at least four photos. Mm. So when we brought that over to the Flickr BioCup, that just didn't work out as well because it was like, oh, you need to have four photos on Flickr. And some people like, like I don't like doing that. I like having just one photo of a yeah. mock. Mm. Um, and like for the, so for the next year we're like, do we really need that rule? And no, we didn't. So then we said we needed four photos, uh, one on Flickr and the rest on on Flickr or on another platform. Um, but then that just got complicated, and mm-hmm. we kind of realized that we didn't need that either. So it wasn't until like the third year that we did it that we just went, no, you only need one photo mm-hmm. on Flickr. You can have as many as you want, but we only need one. So there were some growing pains with it, but that's anything you do. Like Mm -hmm. when you start up something that you're not familiar with or when you like move something from one platform to another, that just happens. Mm. I I do think that the the transition, I mean, the change from four to one photos is definitely was the best solution to that sort of the transferring thing that you mentioned. And mainly because like uh, having that one photo, like the main image of of your mock really enforces that whole like uh, first impression idea whereas like if you're going to show your mock make sure that the main image really like sells it to the judges 
and make make them learn mm-hmm. from that one image as opposed to like oh you have to see these four different images and and that way ascertain all the the small details to because i i think like um sure the judges for the bio cup they when they um analyze a mock sure they're going to the more they look at it uh, the more they'll find details about it but they, that they like but if you can make them like love it instantly from that one image uh, it really like boosts your 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 favor with the judges oh yeah absolutely i've, I've been there don't worry uh, quite interesting too that like the I've seen this a few like uh, uh, Grayson's I think it was um his prelim entry from 2020 I remember him saying like specifically it looks good from one angle and then from any other angle it like required stands and I know there's several other entries like that that are like set up to look appealing from one particular photo angle that's kind of interesting that that wouldn't really be possible if you were doing one that required more photos so that's I, I feel like some of the trends we have now where it's like the, get that one shot wouldn't even happen the old one again wouldn't know firsthand but that's 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 kind of interesting because again that was i never saw it before then so <laughs> no i okay. haven't thought of that you have, you have a point like just like the rules of the contest would dictate what ends up being built and how it ends up and how it ends up being built yeah yeah like mm. exactly like you said if you need four photos then you you know you're going to be unless you're going to take like four photos from like an indistinguishable dif- indistinguishably different angle then you would have to design your mock to be viewed in a 360 setting. Hmm. So I guess that would change how the mock ends up being built. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that one before. Uh, I I do think that um that is definitely like a a huge like um con with the having the take the pictures at multiple different angles and which which would you mentioned before would dictate how differently some mocks would end up being built. And I think with um an example of that is with um Misep, his prelim entry, the uh what was it the Raijin, I believe it was yeah. called. Yeah, I believe it's like it looked really good from the front, but when you said that like uh, the back looked like absolute butt, mainly the the cloud <laughs> thing that you you talked about. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah the, the the honestly i found and I, i'm curious to hear if you guys do the same thing but i find when i like for bio cup and even for some i think like mock league last year i kind of go in panic mode and just try to get the thing looking good for my camera <laughs> angle which means some things i normally focus on like stability or like the stuff going on in the back i kind of just skimp on that because for the sake of time for mm-hmm. Raijin, that was one of them yeah where like the i mean it's built on a stand so like i'm, I'm, I'm looking at the stand right now uh the cloud has a bunch of holes in the back uh, the figure itself looks okay from the back, though, but, like, the cloud and the ring around it just never that's behind it, because I knew that no one would be seeing that unless they were looking at it on a convention table from the back, which probably won't be happening. But. Hmm. I, I think it really, like, depends on, like, the person and their their concept. Like, of course, if it's, like, a much... If it's on a bigger scale, then, like... Uh, if as long as you can make it presentable from its main image and make it look good, then you can forego any of the other angles like i would imagine a lot of people kind of skim on the back because you know if they're not showing the back then there there needs to be less thought put into it unless you're right. so, like unless you're an absolute god like Womi who does it for, good from all angles I, I i think generally like if you know if again it's just the one image make it look good and then everything else you can just 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 ignore i do kind of i'm curious um sort of related I mentioned that like when for these building contests, I kind of have an approach where I'm trying to get things done quickly and focusing on one angle. How do you guys approach building things with prompts? Uh, since I know you both competed this year, I'm curious what your your general process with that goes. Uh, um, Israel, why don't you start with that one? Yeah. Uh, well, as I mentioned before, it really boils down to like the round theme and like if I can come up with a good enough concept. I I generally think that. I would try my best to make it look presentable from like all angles, even though, yes, I generally know that it's only going to be presented in this one image. So I should try to make it look at best from this one image, this one angle I'm trying to photograph it in. But, you know, it's it's kind of like, um, it just didn't sit right with me, like as a builder. And uh, if like, oh, it looks good from this way, but when I turn around and look at it, it looks like absolute butt. It's like, I don't okay. want to display that in my cabinet. And I'm the kind of person who generally likes to uh, build a mock and usually like keep it around for a while until I, I either like I don't like this mock anymore or it's like I can make it better. So I'm just going to just improve upon what I already have or just completely mm-hmm. rebuild it. So that's generally how I go. And I and I think, yes, you had mentioned that, uh, you know, the, the time constraint, it's only two weeks and majority of that um, or at least half of like that time that you 
for that entire round is usually going into like drawing sketches, um, testing uh, concepts, and some other stuff. So may, if you have less time to um, really flesh out the build, even if you wanted to. Uh, and you know, a lot of people in these tournaments they like to post very last minute, or it's like they can't get enough inspiration until like the 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 last minute. So they have less time to really like want to flesh it out as much as they want. Yeah, I'd say I'm in a similar boat to that. Like, I I also like building things to be viewed from as many angles as possible, because I also like to keep things built as long as I can. Um, and I'd say my my two bio cover entries this year, they you know they were both like that, um, even though they both only had one photo. But I was also like what you were just saying. I spent a long time on the second one especially. I spent a long time just trying to figure out what I was going to build. Mm. Um, because I had I had some ideas, but like a lot of them didn't stick, or I couldn't figure out how to make them, mm. and so it went through a lot of different design changes. Um, and so it's kind of a miracle that it even ended up half as good as it was. Mm. But um, I don't mind building for prompts, but I I don't particularly enjoy building under a time limit. Yeah, um, I feel that. Like, yeah, like I did BioCup this year just kind of see if I could. Um, mm -hmm. And because I didn't really have the time this year to try and organize it, but I found that I ended up having some time to participate, which was nice. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm building for a prompt that's like a collab, um, mm -hmm. then that's a lot more like freeing to me. Um, right. And I'll usually, like nine times out of ten, I'll try and make the mock viewable from as many angles as possible, though I do, I do have a couple that are like only really viewable from the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely feel the struggle of the, the the working on a time limit. Same with also like the repeating things, like the repetition of it, where you're 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 in a constant cycle of two weeks of building, like one day of resting, two weeks of building, one day of resting, <laughs> assuming to use that full time, um, which most of the time I didn't. But it's you know it's one of those things that just gets like tiring after a while especially like the the repetition of being under the the, the, the two week time limit I, I i definitely prefer uh the the collab style where it's like okay we've got like 3 to 6 months depending on who's organizing it to get this thing right cuz i i find that like a lot of times with me at least uh and I'm sorry to tear to this all about me or we can turn back in a sec but um i i work on something for like a week or two and then i'm like all right i'm stuck time to leave it for a while and then i'll Give it a while, and then one day I'll have an idea, and then work on it again for a few weeks, and do it for uh, give another break for like over the course of several months, and that 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 tends to work well for me because it's kind of chill, and of course that doesn't work in BioCup because it's just two weeks. Yeah, uh, I'd imagine that the uh, the time constraints is uh, really stressful for a lot of builders, and most of the time why people end up dropping out because they can't get stuff done. Anyways, uh, Mitch, you were talking about like competing this year, so I was actually curious about uh. For this next part, uh, I wanted to talk about like your experience with BioCup, going from judging to actually competing this year. So when you started BioCup back up in 2017, you were one of its main judges. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I was one of the judges the first year. Yeah, how how was like the experience? Like, uh, how did you go from like uh, being one of the main judges to like ended up like just being like a an overseer of the event to competing this year? Well because it's a lot easier to compete than it is to organize or that's the short <laughs> answer um fair enough so funny you mentioned main judge i feel like in the first year i was absolutely not like I, I was absolutely way in over my head and a lot of the other guys like pulled through and made that first contest work um but you know after like a couple of years you get into the this the groove um a lot of organizing it is just kind of the logistics of getting people involved because the first year we did it, it was like pretty small. Um, mm -hmm. Like I'm looking at the, um, all the different BioCup Flickr pages that we have here and the 2017, it has a total of 101 photos. And oh that's God. with a couple, that's with a couple people that I know have like deleted their photos. Right. Yeah. Mm. And then the year after that, it went from 101 to 229 um so it like it more than doubled yeah yeah um and that's because we had the support of you know we had ben's support and we had pz powers support um so we were just able to get like better prizes more more coverage stuff like that um 
And then like 2019 and 2020, a lot of people pulled through and like, I, we were able to get a lot of other people outside, like um, some of the guys from Brick, Brick, show, no, what is it? Brick Nerd, I think. They, mm. they helped us out in supplying some prizes and stuff. Hmm. Um, so a lot of organizing it is just getting people together and like actually like getting all the logistics done. Um, it kind of organizes itself once it actually starts up and like people start building. Um, cause at that point you just kind of let things roll out and let themselves let everything happen. Um, so that's difficult enough. And then on top of that, it was I was organizing like the logistics of everything and then also being a judge and it was just like I was just getting weary you know because it's just a lot um I mean it's been nice like since I started and now um when I started I feel like I took it probably a little too seriously and then because like it really it, at the end of it, it's just a lego building contest um <laughs> but I do tend to like commit myself like a hundred percent to whatever I'm currently working on so it just got to a point where it was like really tiring and i mean i enjoyed it it was it was always something i look forward to but um i just wanted a, a bit of a break and so and i think it was 2020 or 2021 i went from i stepped down from being a judge to just an organizer mm-hmm. um, and then okay no i was a judge in 2020 and then i think in 2021 i just helped host it helped organize it mm-hmm. um and then this year i just I didn't really have the time to do that, to do all that stuff again. So I just decided to not work on it this year. I think not that it ever really needed me because quite frankly, like it's uh, the other guys who made it what it is, but um, you know, it, it's, it's gotten into a rhythm. We all know how to, how to make it work. We all know how to run it. Um, I didn't need to be around. So, and it, obviously, it's doing just fine this year. Well, I guess we can shift on to our next topic with a very smooth segue. Um, so, we've had several different years of rounds and themes. Do either of you guys have like a favorite theme that you've either seen or participated in in the past couple years? Oh, I will. Um, I think one of my because I because I didn't really keep up with the uh, bionicle community until I got back into it in um, 2021. So I've only participated in the this this the the current year's cup and the cup last year. Uh, I don't really give it much thought uh, to the rounds that happen after I get knocked out. So, but it's it's definitely cool to see the mocks that are made in the the rounds after that. Uh, I can give you the uh, some of my favorite rounds from uh, the the one I participated in this year and last year. I think my favorite round from last year was definitely the uh, the media. Is it media? That was round one. Yes. The media uh, round. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was, or was, yeah. Yeah. Uh I like the media round specifically because of the uh the different like sub themes that were included in that round. So there were things <laughs> like um the, oh, you know, there was like comics or books, there was TV shows, plays, uh sculptures and art. And I think that because of those they had there were so many very unique interpretations from straight up remaking a piece of art to twisting and warping the art into something completely different. And I mm-hmm. thought that that had like the most potential, especially for your sub theme, which was music. Uh, and my, music. my <laughs> you know, triggering is PTSD right now. <laughs> keep talking, keep talking. <laughs> uh, and also my, my sub theme, which was art, which I completely flunked. Um, I went for a really boring uh, theme for like a really boring, honestly, in my opinion, like it had like one really cool, like design aspect to it, which was the use of the commander Cody shell to represent like the mock being painted on. But outside of that, it was just a generic painter mock. And now I look at it, it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, like you can, I, I still think you can see like going from that to this year, yeah. there's been a whole lot of improvement. Oh yeah. So uh, if you're happy with it, then you can still look back. Yeah. Like, mm. Hey, this is where we start. Let's go. Mm. But uh, generally, I think my my favorite round for, for this year, I didn't participate in it, but round two, which was numbers. Uh, again, it's going back to like how my how I really like themes that have like a lot of uh, like they give you a lot of freedom 
to really inter right. interpret the round. So with like numbers, a lot of people they d interpreted many many different ways. Some people took it with the uh, with the ah oh, what was it? Some people did like the zodiac, which with Wumi's like Libra dragon, because okay. uh, he got the number seven and Z Z Libra is the seventh zo of the zodiacs. And some people did like I, I don't I don't remember if it's specifically, but I think maybe one person did a mock based on like how uh, four is seen as a bad omen in like Asian culture. Uh, I know one person. I think it was um, it was either Ted Anders or Oscar Sutterwald. He they made like a a mock based on the 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 tarot card, the Hermit, and I yeah, believe yeah. their their number was like four. And I thought it was like wow, it was like there's all these cool interpretations. I really wish I participated in this round because there's just so much freedom with how how people can interpret their numbers rather than just being you know numbers. Right. What about you, Mitch? Yeah. Do you have a favorite theme you've either participated in or seen? The numbers one, uh, that stood out to me too when they announced that, because, like, it's, when they announced it, I was like, that is so simple and so brilliant. And, like, why <laughs> yeah. why didn't we, ha why hadn't we done that one? Yeah. Right? Um, and, yeah, it, like, it lent itself to such really incredible stuff. Like, I was talking with Ben about, um, like, the primordial being, which was made for that one. It was, like, four guys stacked on top of each other in a trench coat, and it's just, like, Oh wait! Both really, both really funny and really cool to look at. Yeah, who made that uh, mock? I forgot. That was, was Space Glove. Ah, oh, of course yeah. it was Ivan. Um, and yeah, and when you look at it, you can tell it's, it looks a lot like his drawings. But that one stood out to me for like how simple it was and like what what it lent to, like creativity. The round three of twenty twenty one, the food theme. Um, that was a really fun one. I know we had like we had talked about doing that before, but for various reasons we couldn't do it until then. So it was nice to see that one actually finally happen. Trying to, I'm looking through all the galleries here, seeing what we have. Um, the uh, the finals of 2021, the see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. Yeah, I think mm, yeah. all had really incredible entries, and that one had an interesting story behind it when we were deciding on what the finals would be, this happens a lot. We don't actually know what the theme is going to be until, like, the day it has to go out. Oh. Um, uh, but that one, we were like, I remember we were talking about it, and it had gotten pitched to, like, oh, what about see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil? Um, and we went back and forth on it a lot. Like, is it too limiting for creativity? So what we did was we said, like, we we did the DIY thing again. Oh, just pick your own theme, right? And then the contestants came back with "see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil." Mm. Um, so that just kind of happened to work out nicely. Uh, that that's something I, I wanted to ask is is because uh, you for the last year's Bio Cup you let the uh, the finalists pick their own theme. Is that something that has happened before in previous uh, cups? Plenty of times. There was one that was on Flickr that was that way, right? I remember. I don't remember which year, but I remember looking. Yeah, at it. I, it was 2017. There was a, there was a DIY thing. Gotcha. So yeah, that was round three. Gotcha. Um, okay. Yeah. okay. So, but what was nice about that one is that, because that was a one v one, um, setup. Mm -hmm. Um, it was like each each individual thing, each individual like pairing, they picked their own. So there was a lot of variety in that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Compared to the finals, where it was like, it was a choose your own theme, like agree upon a, a theme, but it was all one umbrella theme in the end. Right. Mm. Right. Um, I'm just I'm going back through all these. The where is it? The regional mythology and folklore was a really fun one. Um, yeah, was that, that was that was a fun one to was, watch. Was that the one that from was, last year? That, that was, was from 2020. It was round two. Oh. Um, and that that one in holidays from 2018, mm. we got a lot of interesting stuff because when we did the holidays, we like intentionally went out of our way to not pick like the really big ones. Mm. Like there was like there was no Christmas, um, right? So there were a lot of holidays that were specific to different what? parts of the world Where's... that like were not global holidays, so to speak. Um, so between that theme and the regional mythology and folklore theme we got a lot of like really niche stuff which made the round like really exciting to watch because you just didn't you didn't know what you were going to get next but it was always like rooted in something cultural 
Hmm. Was that the uh for the holidays one? Was that the one with the uh somebody did like a Chinese New Year pig because it was like the year of the pig, I believe. Or is that, or is that just like a, a different mock that I'm thinking of completely? I no, that wasn't holidays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember like uh Ben talking about it. I don't know if it was on a like a bis episode or if it was in a podcast. They was like it was like a really big fan of that uh that mock and how it was really well executed. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, King Marshy's Year of the Pig. Mm. Yeah, that mock has a lot of incredible techniques in it. I may have looked at that one a couple times this year since I had made yeah. several pigs. Yeah, yeah, what's up with that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he, man just falls in love with LeChonk and then just can't stop going on about pigs. That was, it was unrelated. Completely unrelated. Yo, we're gonna see like a, a, a new rebranding. We're gonna change the P in Maset to Pig. Oh, no. <laughs> My Snail Eats Pigs. I just thought it'd be funny to do pigs again after the first one. I had fun with the first one, and then I thought it'd be funny to do it again. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> um, I think as far as like the the ones that I've seen in, my favorite one to participate was maybe Kaiju, just because like there there was a lot of cool stuff coming out of that one this year. Uh, I had a lot of fun making making my pig for that one, just because I don't normally do creature builds, so it was, a, it was a fun experimenting time. But also just the, getting to see all the, like the cool takes on micro scale building and like scale uh, and just like weird twists of uh, either existing ideas or just completely stuff that like out of left field. I, I thought was a lot of fun with Kaiju, but I think if I had to pick a second favorite for themes. Um, the prelims from last year where it was like bionicle with a twist i thought was a lot of fun because you got to see a lot of like revamps and stuff that were more out there than just like a single set revamp which i thought was was cool mm. um getting to see all the weird takes on everything you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> did you pick that one uh yeah i pushed for that one oh uh, uh, that, that yeah. was a good one it was it, I, I think that uh a lot of people really like that prelims because i know a lot of people are like always like going on about like how this is like supposed to be bio cup but where's the the bionicle in it uh, right so and and that's why a lot of people really like the um the 2021 prelims which was bionicle remix and i believe the uh the 2019 was revamps if i'm not mistaken which is is it uh... was it 2019 no i think 20, 2017 was revamps and then uh, for the preliminary theme and then for 2018, we did a theme fusion where mm. it was like Fuse Bionicle with another Lego theme. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, and that one I would like to see come back because there's a couple extra themes that we weren't able to fit in there or just straight up forgot about. Like we somehow forgot insectoids. It's like, Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> like how? It's like it's such a perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I, yeah. I think it would be a good idea to to bring it back, especially with some of the newer theme, more more of Lego's modern themes. It'd be interesting to see yeah. how people combine it with that. I'd imagine like uh, with ones like Monkey Kid and Ninjago and the rest of the. Uh, what's a really recent theme that I'm not thinking of right now? Hidden side. Video. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. There's so much potential with all of them. So yeah, if <laughs> if if the, any of the judges for next year are hearing this, you know. You know, make it happen. I know. I remember we wanted to do time cruisers, but time oh. cruisers is an odd one because time cruisers as a theme was based on mixing other Lego themes, mm, and yeah. so like it just didn't have enough unified direction for us to warrant making a time cruisers like mix with Bionicle sub theme. The 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 fusion was for the round for round one, was it of that year? Yeah. Uh, and there was how, how many sub themes are usually uh, implemented in round one? It, it's depending on the participants, if I'm very correctly, because I'd imagine like in previous years it's lesser compared to what it is now. It is. Um, me. Okay, so we had we had twenty seven sub themes. Mm -hmm. That was the first year that we did like a three person. Because mm -hmm. it was one v one before then, but then that year we did three people per bracket. Mm -hmm. So, in so for for that one, you'd give like twenty seven brackets as opposed to now, where it's like three brackets are like the same sub theme uh, with like mm -hmm. nine different people or like um, uh, twelve, depending on the the count. So... Um, 
we've we've done that a couple times where it was like if we can't break something down into 27 we break it down into nine and then like have multiple different three person brackets under one of the nine sub themes mm-hmm. um that usually only happens like if we can't justify doing 27 individual sub themes but we try for the 27 individual sub themes mm-hmm. at least we tried um i imagine with this year with the numbers like you could have had up to 27 numbers but like it's a lot easier to build something under five, the number yeah. five, and build under the number nineteen. Yeah, there's, mm. there's a lot less significance to like twenty three or twenty two than there is to yeah. two. Mm-hmm. So, like, I' I'm not surprised they chose to just go up to nine, and really yeah. it was for the best. Well, that time there were also only uh, nine brackets, anyways. So, because I thought they nine. had. Oh, what did they do that with that one then? Was that the kaiju? Kaiju one was the one where they did clusters, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, Which that again, makes sense. I, don't, I, I think it'd be a struggle to come up with 27 different kinds of uh, big kaiju thing with that much overlap. Even because, like, just with the, the nine they did, there was still some overlap. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I'd imagine, because I was talking to Alex about it when I was still brainstorming my my concept for the kaijus, is, like, uh, he would mentioned that, you know, a lot of these things will overlap with each other. Like, um, yeah. uh, like... Uh, reptiles and aquatic might overlap with each other elementals and reptiles might overlap with each other because generally a lot of people like when they think kaijus they're they're gonna think of things like dragons and hydras and um unless you're like doing the like cosmic horror sub theme but even then some cosmic horrors had elements of like draconic looking character like designs in them as well uh especially with one of them where we'll talk about later which is uh my pick for our next um section Oh, right. Yeah. Moving on to that. Um, I guess you guys have any <laughs> favorite mocks from uh, either this year or... Uh, yeah, let's just stick to this year. Yeah. Uh, uh, it sounds like you've got mine, so... All right, all right. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, originally when I was, like, picking out a mock for this... Um... For this category, I was gonna pick one of Wumi's um, entries because all of Wumi's entries are like amazing. Uh, man, man really knows what he's doing. But um, I think the one of the ones that really caught me off guard when I when when the builder posted it was um, GK's mock Aether anomaly. Um, aside from the uh, the obvious Among Us reference in the in the included in the mock, I just think that um, he really really pulled off something amazing with when he made this mock. Just the flow of everything, it's how it's presented, uh, especially for like the, his sub theme, which was um, cosmic horror. It's like it's really, it it really does like that that whole like uh, what we mentioned before with like having that one image really making an impact with that one image, and he's really captured it um, amazingly. Uh, it, God, I I don't know. It's like there's so much thing. There's so much I want to talk about with this image, this this mock, but like. Yet I can't really put it into words. Mm-hmm. Mitch, do you have a favorite from this year that you've seen? Um, I mentioned the, earlier the uh, those like four guys stacked yeah. on top of one another. I like them a lot, but um, if I had to pick another one, it's uh, a mock by Vodoff called mm-hmm. First Place. It was for the numbers theme. Um, mm-hmm. It's like this robot in a motorcycle. Um, mm-hmm. I just I like the way the um the parts on the motorcycle tessellate. It's a really cool looking machine. Um very sleek and aerodynamic and the, the way all the tubes and mechanical detailing flow on it are just they lead your eye around it a lot and they, they're very distinct from the rest of the bike. Um the figure's nice too, he's pretty simple. Um but he's got good character to him. And he's very distinct from the bike itself, which is nice. Um, he's got some little extra details, like this little flag on his jacket. You know, mm-hmm. he's already won. Um, which, cool little bit of subtext to it there. So, i uh excited to see what Vodoff does. Yeah, I'm... Um, um, I guess it's, run, it's only a few more hours till the deadline for, for the current round, so hopefully he gets this up soon. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting beaten by it, so... I, I also like on on his that one there that like I think I've mentioned this before in a different when we talked about this before uh, building like multiple things for a single prompt in such a short time frame I find it really impressive that people can 
like dedicate a certain level of detail to doing multiple, basically multiple mocks where you get the, the motorcycle and the figure. Uh, you don't have to skimp on either of them, and I'm I'm impressed that he was able to pull it off there. Hmm. And and we did see um, like uh, another mock do something similar with uh, Arrow's Hermogoblin, where he made like yeah. the, a figure oh, and uh, the bike really itself. Cool. That one, I, I think that one's a lot of fun, uh, just yeah. conceptually. Uh, also, I'm I'm a sucker for anything that's based on puns, so of course that one's a winner. And as far as like, uh, I was gonna mention, I thought that the the human nature by Space Bunny, uh, was a fun take on the nature theme. Just, uh, it's, it's not it's not one I would have thought of personally. Like when he when he posted, I was like, oh yeah, that seems like so obvious, like human nature, all all, all that. But like I thought it was a a fun take and a fun representation of uh like Freudian psychology with the, the three different aspects hmm. um for like i think one that still i made me say wow was uh cody's uh septum the asset seven one that was for the the numbers theme just hmm. getting in on the 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 seven arms and the seventh bowl and the seven pointed staff and i just thought that was a lot of fun um i think that it doesn't have nearly as much character as, uh, as his competitors did but i still think it's like just a really fun take on, on, the, on the theme so those two probably my my the ones that stick to me this year mm. but, Are there any yeah. other mocks we want to you know, like give an honorable mention to before we uh move on i mean i'm a big fan of, of the, the libra dragon i think that one was cool um also uh, and Wumi and I happened to happen to both make something involving scales. I thought was fun for that round, even though it didn't happen intentionally. It's always it's always <laughs> nice to see like these these nice little coincidences happen, even if it wasn't intentional. The mm -hmm. uh, the one another one that stands out to me is um, Omega Mecha Reptilian by Just Torp. Um, mm -hmm. Very clearly heavily inspired by Mecha Godzilla. Mm -hmm. um, but what I like so much about it is that it it really captures that look of like a man in a rubber suit mm -hmm. design. Um and like I like the way that he's using a ton of like silver pieces with heavy texturing that, you know, they on paper they would all clash, but because it is kind of a mess and there's like like there's a lot of like um like repeated lines on the thing, it almost looks like like it is made out of rubber and it is like it's almost like it's folding or bending or like those are built into it to kind of s simulate the look of being metal even though it's obviously rubber and so yeah. i like the way that the parts create that illusion um and when i was building my entry for that round i was trying to replicate that look of like a man in a suit and i think i didn't do it as well as i could have and i've done before but um so it was nice to see this mock actually like pull that off yeah mm. for sure uh i just want to give it like a really quick shout out to uh some of the mocks that ari made for the for the wild cup so far i think one of his one of his best uh mocks of all times the one he did for the kaiju round uh what was it called it was like the it was that like sort of godzilla s monster fused with a with a rail gun i'm trying to find it right now but I thought that was, I remember he like showed me uh, whips of the mock when he was like still working on it. I was like absolutely blown away because it was, uh, it was mainly just like the, the whole torso with the rail gun attached to it. Uh, Project Apoc Apocarizar Dulon. It's a really, it's oh, a really right. yeah, it's a really like, tough name to say, but it's just, at first I thought it was like, um, it was some sort of kaiju with a, with a small city built into its torso. But then he told me it was like a real gun. I was like, oh yeah, I can see it. Uh, real, real big fan of like the like the, how he made like the the more organic looking parts with the uh, the legs and the tail, uh, and and how it like contrasts really nicely with the the mechanical details with the rail gun. I I also really like um, uh, J Six crashes uh, the wrong place to park. His his like two headed T Rex. Uh, I I think like the again with the. A lot. There's a lot of thing, things to love with the the mock, especially with the use of the crocodile head for the for one of the dinosaurs' tongues. Uh, and another mock that I just want to quickly talk about is uh, Gengo's uh, mother singularity that he made for the numbers round as well, and how he uses the these capsule pieces. I don't know what they're called, but there's like these translucent capsule pieces to sort of like represent planets, and how he used like the Enika 
uh, Zamor Sphere Launcher's stock as like a rib cage, and he put like a bunch of ball joints in there to emulate like small planets encapsulated inside of it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's just there have been a lot of like really great showings uh, this year. It's arguably one of the best years for Bio Cup. Mm-hmm. Yep, agreed. Yeah. Do we want to give any like closing thoughts or like general like our general opinions about Bio Cup before we move on and take our break? Bio Cup's cool. You should do it if you have the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how about you, Mitch? Yep. Um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's a lot a lot different experience um being on the other side of it. And you know, I'm glad I did it. Uh, I don't know if I'll I don't know what I'll be doing next year, if I'll be going back to organizing it, or if I'll be competing again, or if I'll be doing neither. Um, mm-hmm. We'll see. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it was fun. I I look forward to it every year, because, like, if nothing else, a lot of, like, really, like, whether I'm doing it or not, like, a lot of really great stuff comes out of it. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a lot of stuff that, like, probably would not have gotten built had the themes not been presented to people. Absolutely. A hundred percent agree. Like sometimes even if the mock like isn't quite like up to par with the builder like the rest of the builders like mm-hmm. library, I guess you could say. Um like you get stuff that is like really creative and inventive. Um mm-hmm. and just it just makes for like a really fun experience. Like both participating and like looking inward or looking from the outside so mm. yeah i always enjoy that mm. i told yep I, I agree with you both uh for me generally it's like you know uh, as what with Mazette mentioned is like if you have the time to do it you might as well it was the case for for mitch he didn't have necessarily the time to organize it so instead he chose to participate and generally a lot of these like with with tournaments like the bio cup and in some cases like the mock league with the spare parts community it's uh there are definitely great ways to improve as a builder it's like you learn techniques from other builders you can get feedback from these other builders uh as if, especially the case for me like i found myself like talking to ari a lot uh throughout this entire round and got his opinion as well as Mazette's opinion when um trying to improve both my mocks for this round um and you can see that a lot of people like when they build mocks for the bio cup sometimes it's arguably some of the best work they've done throughout their whole mocking career it was not the case for me i thought both my uh both my builds were mediocre at best but i i am still really proud of what i produced uh, at the end of the day uh and i'm definitely looking forward to participating next year as well so we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with our next topic so we'll see you guys in a bit The North Wind is an elite undercover industry. The North Wind is an elite un- an elite undercover species task force dedicated to her- help And we're back from our break and now now that we've talked about BioCup and stuff we're going to move on to our next topic which is about revamps. So this is one uh, a topic that Mitch was actually uh, a little keen on talking about, and I think it's a it's gonna be a fun one to talk about because as we've seen in uh, in recent years, there have been a lot of uh, really cool revamp collabs coming out of the community uh, of characters that we all know and love, right? So we're gonna talk about some of our favorites here in a hot minute. So Mitch, you wanna wanna take away with the the theme? Sure. So um, yeah, I'm really interested in um, bionicle revamps as of late. I'm more interested in like I'm trying to think of the best word for it, but like, like very personalized or very like distinct remakes of Bionicle sets. Because um, mm-hmm. a lot of Bionicle sets, you know, they were all very like formulaic. Um, a lot of clone waves, um, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and you saw some minor uh, variation amongst all the different sets, but like especially from like 2006 onward, it was kind of like the same torso mold, and then just like swap out the lengths and the pieces used to make the limbs and then give it a, a different mask and different weapons from the rest. Mm. Um, and there are a lot of remakes and of sets that kind of follow a similar pattern or kind of fall into the make everything custom 
uh, mindset. And, you know, I also enjoy doing nothing wrong with that. But uh, at a certain point, a lot of those begin to blend together to me. And I really enjoyed seeing that remakes that are, like, much more distinct and much more personalized um, or, like, incorporate new ideas into the character. I, th- I find that really engaging. So. Mm. You did a full series with the your your Telenuva revamps reimaginings, um, and you, you, let's say you know when you mentioned you like to like to find ways to have make each of them have their own character. Uh, so, what was your approach with making those? Did you like focus on specific aspects of the set you could really like grapple onto or like, latch onto and just really like explore, or is it, like based on like things from the lore of the characters, or I, I guess like. How'd you go about making yours that end up being like so visually distinct from each other and from the originals while still uh, having a lot that links them to the originals? So with the Nuva, um, the first one I had made was Tahu, and mm-hmm. uh, I was inspired by a some techniques that were used on a remake of a Hero Factory set, um, mm-hmm. and that ended up becoming like Tahu's um, chest. Mm-hmm. And then I liked the look that those those hockey shoulders or hockey helmets had and they're like they're like graded um mm-hmm. like vents on them and so i used the orange picari on the top of his head to match that and when i looked mm-hmm. at like the head that i had made it had looked a lot like the how nuva and so i decided to make it into like a tahu nuva remake um because mm-hmm. the nuva to me are kind of like the the first the first toa set i ever got was liwa nuva um so the Nuva to me are kind of like classic Bionicle. Uh-huh. And when I had made... So I, that's why I wanted to go with them. Because that and we don't really see Toa Nuva remakes as much as we see like Toa Mata remakes. Sure. Um, and because a lot of people like think of the Nuva as like worse versions of their Mata counterparts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, sure, in some ways. Um, but if that's the case, then why don't we remake them more often? You know? So... That was a part of why I wanted to do the Nuva. Um, when I did Tahu, I wanted to do this style that I had done in a couple mocks before him, where he had like a, a dark gray base color with like light gray accents. Um, mm-hmm. I made him a lot more like anatomical than a lot of my other mocks. Um, mm-hmm. And so when I had finished him, I thought. You know, I've never really done like a big series or like a big project like this. So what if I did the rest? Like, it'd just be kind of a fun little thing to take on for myself. And then with the rest of them, they all kind of fell in. Like, I didn't have much in the way of like connecting them all together, but there were a couple things I set set aside. Like, they all had to have the original blades, even if I like added some things to them. Um, those silver pieces had to be incorporated. Mm-hmm. So, like, Tahu Nuva still has his swords. Liwa still has his sword. Um, but I only gave him one instead of two. Uh, Pohachu's was the most different because um, instead of holding them individually, I just did what he did, what he has in the movie, where he, like, puts them together and has, like, a club. Mm-hmm. Which, I like the look that those claws make as a club. It looks interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that made sense given, like, he has the mask of speed. He's going to be running quickly. What, like, what good are these little claw things going to be to him when, like, a club being like a blunt weapon would make much more sense? Uh, and there's like a couple of techniques that are used on several of them that are uh, like tying them all together. Like they use um, macaroni pieces. Um, so aside from a handful of specific building techniques, they're mostly like designed individually. Um, and I wasn't particularly focused on, like, the lore, so to speak. Um, because for every single one of them, I use the descriptions of the characters as they appear in, like, a a trading card game. And Mm -hmm. I like those descriptions because they're a lot different than anything we got afterwards, because they were, like, written in the, for the original story bible of Bionicle. Mm -hmm. Um, like, they talk about the Toa being different ages, uh-huh. and, like, the Toa being almost worshipped as gods, and I like that angle, but it didn't really inform the design of the mocks as much. 
which people pointed out, um, and that's fair. Yeah, a lot of them were kind of individually inspired. Like, Gali in particular was almost entirely just a collection of techniques that mm-hmm. I wanted to try out, where Liwa, I was more inspired on, like, trying to build something built around, like, wild collections of tubes. With Onua, I wanted to do stuff like color repetition, so, like, you see the purple in him, because Onua as a set, his color scheme, I think, was a little bit bland, and then, the, like, the other Onu characters had, like, orange or purple in their color schemes. It's like, why didn't Onua get purple? Yeah. So I wanted to add that. Um, Kohatu was... He was also kind of like a collection of techniques. And then Kopaka was built around a similar frame as Tahu because I wanted to show that those two characters were... Because they're kind of foils to one another, so I wanted to show that they had like similar physical traits but were in, went in different directions. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was intentional, but I like how... Um... Uh, Tahu has the use of the two hockey pieces for hockey shoulder pieces for the, the chest, and then Kopaka has it for it's the two hockey chest pieces. I don't know if that was an intentional thing. I do think it's kind of neat that you end up using hockey pieces and two of them together to make the chest in completely different ways. That wasn't actually intentional, but yeah, I, I'm with you. I like how that. I like how that turned out. That's kind of a lot of things for me. Like now that these guys didn't have direction, but mm-hmm. A lot of the stuff that I make, I know kind of where I want it to go, but I don't specifically know how to get there. So I find the mock mm-hmm. while I'm building it. I think it's one of the fun parts about mocking, though, where you like you a lot of times you'll have a general idea of what you want, and then as you make it, that idea will just change because you'll realize, oh hey, like this thing might work a little bit better, or hey, that thing I originally wanted to do is just like can be insanely difficult to pull off for it decently well. I think that's one of the fun parts of it because it's like a puzzle, but the puzzle's constantly changing. Yeah, just looking through them now too. Um, I'm, I'm, I noticed some of the macaroni tube like repetitions that you were talking about earlier. Now that I look at it more, I don't think I picked up that up on that originally. Yeah, I think all of them except Pohatu and Gali have them to some extent. Okay, that makes me feel better because I was looking for it on those. I was like, ah. <laughs> I'm blind. <laughs> uh, actually, oh. I was uh, wondering about the because I noticed a lot of the like majority, like five of them are. So more or less symmetrical with like their body designs. All except Liwa. Is there a reason why you chose to make a Liwa like asymmetrical in the arms? Why one arm is like incomplete and one arm is like extremely long? Yes. So that one actually does have like, you know, I said I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the lore. Um, that one I did. And he has, so there's kind of two reasons. He has one messed up arm because it says that like Liwa's a very clumsy character. And, like, he has those moments for, like, you know, his his mask gets infected or something else happens to him when he's a Nuva. But he's a very, like, clumsy character who gets himself into a lot of trouble. So I liked that idea, and I kind of wanted to show that visually through, like, him having a an arm that was almost, like, torn off. Like, mm-hmm. something had happened to him. But another reason I had done that was because a friend of mine did an illustration of Liwa, but in the style of, like, another artist. And he he made the... It was Liwa Mata, so he made the, the axe arm a lot bigger. Mm. And I had initially wanted to do that, because, like, the really long arm, I was going to have that on the side of the... like, the downward-sloping Hulk piece. Um, mm-hmm. But I was having trouble trying to figure that out. And... It kind of just turned into that, what you see now. But the 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 picture ended up being like a big visual inspiration for the mock, and I'm looking for it now and having trouble finding it. So I'll send it your way when I actually do find it. Mm. Would you say the the use the like the slanting of the the Hulk piece to one side was also like a a, a design choice that attributed to the the whole showing his clumsy nature? Yes. All right. Well, that was that was. It's a really like a uh, good detail talk about that. Uh, if you want to hear more about um, like Mitch talk about his Nova series, you can check it out on his Instagram where he did a uh, live stream with with Ari, Mister Butloaf, talking a bit more about these mocks. That being said, uh, l- let's move on to Masep's uh, part of the Bear Magna revamp as well as his uh, as his 
no comma revamp that he did last year for bio cup yeah so the um oh, i'm seeing now that picture you just sent mitch that that is funky i like it Ooh. um yeah moving on to the the bear magna collab um so i i did two for that uh one was gresh the other one was strack so the gresh one was a very last minute addition uh just because we had someone drop from the collab last minute so i subbed in for him i happened to have the gresh mask on me uh so i did that but for the strack one that's the one i i, I spent the most time on that one was i think i spent like six months working on that off and on because i was like i started before i moved from one state to another and then finished it after um but yeah, for that one, uh, I, I think Strack has like a really distinct stance because he's got that big hunchback. Um, and also just the way his, his torso is armored since he uses only like one Anika armor piece for the torso instead of like the full um, like chest armor that they normally have. Uh, I, I thought that he kind of like has this distinct, like really narrow to really, like really wide stance. Um, I really wanted to like find a way to capture that uh in, in a mock by like making him really bulky but also like really lanky because i think that's i think that's something that the anika sets do a little too well or uh maybe maybe to the point where it's not well anymore is that they they can be kind of lanky um with Strack, i i i think it kind of works for him and i wanted to like run with that um but also just there's some things about him that kind of reminded me of like a like a frozen skeleton and it's not something that's like really i think intentional in the set design uh, that's supposed to be skeletal but that's that's like the main thing i wanted to do with mine is make him kind of like a frozen skeleton um so for his like the main things i wanted to latch on to was one the stance to like the the general sort of like wide but still lanky silhouette and then also like the skeletal skeletal theme so that's kind of the main things i i, I was focusing on when i was making him like start up with the spine because i have a habit of doing that um and then uh, branching out to like using the his his ice pieces as like the chest and the shoulders. Um, originally, it was used to the shoulders. They ended up dropping. Um, yeah, I really really enjoyed making that revamp because uh, it was a bit of a struggle at one point because I kept getting stuck. But I I think it was a lot of fun. Um, I also like really enjoyed adding some more color to him because originally he's just kind of white and blue, and uh, adding like the gun metal and the the dark tan. I thought looked really nice together and I thought was a fun way to give him more of a, a warrior look and then he's got some armor uh on him and he's not just he's not just only ice. Um for for the Gresh one I didn't spend as much time like focusing on the like specific aspects of the character because I was just trying to get it done quickly. So that one was like more reusing some things from other mocks I'd done in the in, in years past mainly around like the hips and the legs those are like the like the lower legs are just straight ripped from a different mock with, with like some slight tweaks but for him uh since gresh appears in like multiple lines as like the stars and and the like glatorian line i kind of wanted to merge those two together and that he's like the size of the glatorian but he's got like the silver blades from the, the stars line um i also thought it'd be fun to like spin the thorn axe launcher into like more of like a seed shooter gun thing instead of just like the, the typical launcher but um yeah gresh was i i gresh did not have nearly as much thought to put into it as a as a strack did just because it was it was done like within a week and strack was done over the course of like six months so there was a lot of time for that one to cook in the oven whereas the other one not so much i i will definitely say i i, I prefer i prefer strack to, to gresh uh in terms of the the mox and gresh is no longer in together and strack still is if that tells you anything mm. um but uh i think that for for revamps the the like one of my favorite parts of them and i'll be curious to hear what your guys opinions on this is, is in a couple minutes but um i i really like uh trying to keep them like linked to the main character like the characters they're based on in a few components without like staying too too close to it i think it's fun to like do a what if scenario like what if this character was this or what if this character was that or oh this character has this aspect let's just focus on that specifically and like really extrapolate it out um i think that's fun because you can like uh latch onto your favorite parts of the character and then just <laughs> ignore the ones you don't uh which i think is a fun way to either improve or just change the way the characters are presented and like with the no comma drive one that one originally wasn't supposed to be no comma i ran into some road bumps trying to make it into a comma mock but uh 
turning into no comma, I thought it was fun because like I could link it back to the character with like the subtle use of not really subtle, but like the use of blue on the mask and the shoes, but like just ignoring blue on the rest of the color scheme. Um, and that one too, I also thought was like the Metro are like their, their stories take place in this big like city that's controlled by all these robots and like this, like really controlling government. Uh, and you've got this, this group of, um, these group of Toa that are like kind of fighting back against it, uh, for, to, to like to uproot the the corruption in it, which just reminds me of some uh, like vague, I guess cyberpunk th themes that are sometimes shown in certain different forms of media, um, which is why I wanted to run with that kind of like aesthetic for for her on the revamp, which is why I picked that. Um, and then like with that one too, I thought it'd be fun to like take her her weapons. Like, what if her weapons were instead of like the the metal, they were like laser aqua axe things. That's why I did with her weapons. And that one was a lot of fun. It's super flimsy, very fragile. But I really, really like it, and like a lot of the techniques I used on it, I've used on other mocks since then. I think it's been a fun learning experience to kind of get to what my style is now. So, um, and and you, Ezra, you've done. Uh, I know you've done at least one revamp with your Vaki. What was your What was your approach with that one? Oh yeah, so uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about my uh, the Vaki, I, the revamp I did for my Vaki, which was Vorzak. Uh, but I will talk a little bit about um, uh, like what was the the sort of like basis for the start of this collab. So, uh, a while back during the late last year, I was about, I, I believe it was like when the mock leak was still going on. I was talking to uh, Peter uh, and Dan about like, uh, what what are, what are your like first sets that you have when that got you into Bionicle? And I, and I mentioned that Vorzak, the, the green Vaki, was the, was sort of my entry point into the whole Bionicle line. Uh, and Peter coincidentally said that his he also got into the the into Bionicle with with the Baki and his one was Bordak, which was the blue one. Um and and I and I think Dan had also said that no, well no, Dan Dan for Dan's case it wasn't so much the fact that um it was the Baki that got him into the Bionicle line, which is what uh, which is why I recruited him into the the collab. The reason why was because I pitched to him an idea. I was like, "What if you take like uh, what? Because uh, for context, black and gold is Dan's favorite color scheme, which is why like uh, he really liked uh when I made my tarantula plague mech mock for for the mock league. Um, and so I pitched to him is like, you know, Rorzak, uh, what is it? Yes, yes. I pitched to him is you know, Rorzak is like his main color scheme is black and yellow. Why don't what if you revamped him and made him black and gold instead? And he really loved that idea, which is like why I brought him on for the collab as well as you know I just wanted to work with him on something. Um. So just quick, really quickly. Uh. So we started this collab and I brought on some other people. I brought in um Alex Merton's construction divas because I also wanted to. Uh, it's mainly uh, as a builder, I try to uh, work with newer people instead of having to like, it's nice to work with people you're familiar with. Like I work with uh, um, Ron, Susu and Peter, like for like three collabs now. Um, but I've also wanted to like uh, expand to building with newer people. So I want to learn different techniques, maybe get some, some of their advice because their builders I really respect. Uh, just so it, it, I see it as a way as like, you know, building relations on top of like improving my skills as a builder. Um, so I brought on like Alex. I also recruited Ron, even though like, you know, Ron didn't really get to pick his, uh, his Vaki, which I felt really bad about. Uh, and I also brought on Susu because Susu is like, uh, he's a really good builder and he's a builder who's like known for doing a lot of these revamps. Uh, I'm pretty sure people have seen things like his, uh, his, uh, in Ica Titans revamp, his um, his Fantoka and Mystica revamps, and a bunch of the other revamps he's done. So I thought it was like it was a no brainer to bring him on. Uh, when I was designing my Vaki specifically, um, I thought of a few things. I remember I was like really stuck on how I wanted to design him. I remember I originally thought of designing it as sort of like this techno organic looking like um. Sort of like it's like this living creature that's being kept alive by like these metal augments. So I wanted to have things like exposed guts and a sort of like an open rib cage kind of design. While the like the, his legs are maybe like um, synthetic with like with all these metal uh, attachments and augments to it. Um, I ended up not doing that, and because you know, uh, Vakis are 
they're machines. They're not supposed to be living. So it ended up turning out to be like just a like like fully robotic with how it's designed. But the one aspect that I did decide to keep that had that semblance of that original sort of organic mechanical look was the head, which had like this uh his pincer like uh, mouth with like these rows of serrated teeth as well as that barbed tongue. That's the only part from that sort of uh organic mechanical concept that stuck with the design. It's mainly because I really loved how it looked. It didn't make sense with the rest of the mock looking all machine like, but I think like it ended up turning out really well. Um, I know uh, another thing was what, with the Vaki that their their hands and their weapons are supposed to be attached to each other, so they don't actually have uh, hands and fingers to hold onto their weapons. But I remember seeing a concept art for one of the Vaki where it uh, depicted them instead of having the the weapons actually attached to to their hands, it's them having hands and like holding it uh, as if they were like staffs or weapons, and that's kind of like why I designed mind to have hands uh it, it it meant that i'd have to sacrifice his uh his the, the vaki's iconic function of being able to turn on go on all fours and being able to walk like a spider but um i think that the design choice at the end of the day was worth it and it also allowed me to really go wild with how i how different i took the design making its body super long with its limbs and its uh, torso giving it a tail so it's got this almost like xenomorph vibe which was another main inspiration for it um, I think to this day, it still ends up being one of my favorite mocks, purely from technique standpoint and like execution. But uh, I can understand like a lot why it's, a lot of the Vakis in done for this collab were maybe not met with the most positive response. There were definitely a lot of mixed responses because you know, you know, one would say that they're not like um, true to like what the Vaki are, uh, but some people did like how like different they all looked from each other because you know the vakis are infamous for being clone sets of each other with different weapons so um you know it's not i i i i'm i'm generally pretty happy with how it all turned out and how everyone's ended up looking so different from each other and while keeping the concept of like the their rep their respective vakis you guys it's a difficult balance to land because like like that the level of making it personalized but also making it recognizable right like unless you're gonna go like completely like 180 um and i definitely struggled with this with the uh nuva in some ways i wish i had gone more crazy with the nuva remakes and in some sometimes i think i wish i had gone more similar to the sets but um trying to find that balance of keeping it distinct and personalized and making it resemble the set um it's a really hard thing to strike. And I think it can be challenging too, because like if you if you stay too close to set one, there kind of, I feel like it kind of gets to the point where like if it's so close to the set, why did why did we bother doing it in the first place? Mm. And mm-hmm. two, uh, I feel that it can be kind of hard to make something distinctly yours if it's staying too close to the source material, which also means if, pe- if other people do the same thing, they can kind of end up running together. Where it's like if we've seen. 13 different Tahu revamps that are all like various different spins on the set that are still very faithful. It's like it, it, it becomes harder and harder to value each individual one. Um, I think that's kind of like the benefit of taking things out in more diverse directions is that you can be like, yeah, this is I, can, I one, I can express more with this, and two, this can be like something that's distinct, um, which is personally why I like really prefer the ones that are just like it's a revamp of this character which has like this one or two things that really link back to the original. But other than that, it's like just completely out there. Um, I think like the Borok Borok collab with the like the black hole Borok, where I think is a good example of that. Where it's like it's very very loosely related to the original, and it's like got the gravity theme and like the Krona theme, but like it doesn't look anything like a Borok, which I think was just a lot of fun. Where it's like, ah, oh, cool. I would never have thought of that. But do you guys? Uh, what what's your take on like super faithful versus more out there? Do you like? I mean, it seems like you guys kind of, from what you talked about, like taking the more out there spins on things. But like as far as mocks that you see people make, do you like prefer like balance? Just saying, like what what what's what are your favorite ones that you've seen? Uh, I think generally like when it comes to like uh faithful versus um out there it's like what you mentioned like 
uh with what well, i mean with what mitch mentioned is like it's good to find a balance between like they're uh doing both uh because like uh, with what you mentioned is like if you make it too close to the to the to what it's supposed to be based on what's the point of revamping it and it's like mm -hmm. uh don't, you want you want to really have that freedom of like because because i bet uh, like a bunch of people when they do revamps they have like all these crazy wacky ideas that they like when they see this character they like imagine it as something completely different uh it's like with the when when i made the baki it's like it's not supposed to have a tail but i decided to give it a tail anyways because when in my from my viewpoint like the baki are almost reptilian like with how their like heads are designed how their posture is walking and you could argue a bit based on their transformation they're closer to more of an insect like vibe but you know yeah. That that that's how pe maybe other people resonate with. How do I want to? How do I see the, the the set and how how what do I think it could have been versus what it ended up being? Um, but of course, you know, like as much as freedom as I had with like really changing up the design and proportions of the mock to meet what I had envisioned, what the set should have been. I still want to have semblance of that character be obvious rep obviously represented in the in the mock itself, which is why I tried to make the the head design of my Vaki so close to what it's supposed to be based off of. Uh with the others that they they try to go with like really unique with their color schemes uh, and their head designs. Some of them were either like one singular color with like with Dan's with Dan's Vaki, his because uh, his Vaki is supposed to have like the the headpiece at the back, which is supposed to be yellow or gold color for his Vaki. He ended up making it completely black and have like a like just a tentacle be at the back. And then with um uh with with Alex with Alex's Vaki, his one was like not even remotely close to what the Vaki looked like. His was the most different, and especially the head was like completely different. It had this like Cyclops design. It used the Onoa mask uh as it's to cover up most of it and give it that the brown color and what you see with mine is like i really tried to imitate as much of the vaki as possible it has like the the invasion from below spike in red to resemble like the the back crest where of the vaki piece as well as these dinosaur tails that flow down which represent the the bottom pieces and as well as the the the, the pincers on this front sure i did you know do with the whole organic spin by giving it teeth and the tongue but you know, I I feel like you can instantly tell from looking at its head design that like, oh that's supposed to be a Vaki, uh, mm -hmm. which is that whole like uh, my way of paying homage to what the Vaki are supposed to be. What about you, Mitch? Sorry. Like, how do you feel? How, where do you fall on that spectrum? Um, I'm definitely for being out there as much as you want to be. Like, like the the Borak collab that you mentioned that the the black hole Borak is it's just like amazing to look at. I feel like as long as you have at least one or two recognizable traits of the character, you can kind of take it in whatever direction you want, like whether that's like similar proportions or like maybe like similar weapons to what the set had, or like even just using like if it's a toe, like using the mask that it had, um, or like recreating el like design elements of its mask. But as long as there are certain elements of the the set that are present even if you've tweaked them in just slight ways, I think you can usually get away with doing like some major overhaul. Like what you mentioned with the Vaki head, I have a similar story with my Nidiki where he uses, um, he has like a big, big head kind of like, cause you know, the set uses a Vaki head. Um, yeah. so he has like that big green light or eye stock. Um, when I initially made Nidiki, it had a slope on the back of its head that like flowed better with the torso but when I switched it to a slope that was much longer, it resembled the, the Vaki head much more, and it made the, the mock resemble the character a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, and even though I abandoned his two large pincer hands, um, he still has six limbs. He has four legs and two arms. I just like swapped where they are and what they look like. Mm -hmm. So like between the gray and dark green color scheme, the, the large and the large head and like the large crest on his head and then like a very small um avaki like head below that like there are enough physical traits there that resemble the set but all the other details make it a bit more distinct and more personalized i appreciate the the use of color you've gotten there too where you're keeping like the face of it gray like the original set and then like the crest of it's going to have like the green the darker green to match the other colors and the yellow to kind of get that sort of like glowy effect going on 
I think that's like really really nice. And it's not like it's not like wow, this is a crazy color scheme. It's just like it, it keeps it keeps it linked to the original. I really like that. Thanks. Hmm. I think uh, uh, a good example of a mock that kind of falls between both spectrums is uh, is uh, Ari's uh, Noric revamp. Like yeah. you can you can see like it, it it's clearly based off like the character. Like it's it's supposed to be rebuilt on, but there's obvious uh, you know uh, the things that Ari did to really like go wild with it. Like he's got like much longer like uh, limbs that have like three points of articulation. Uh, he's got really big feet, and he changed up the weapons a little bit, and it still it still like resembles Norik's original weapons, but it's designed completely differently. And I think they suit him way better than the like the original staff like at, that he had. I believe his staff was the the one with the the Gali Nuva axe on it, or was yeah yeah that yes, yeah, it's the Gali Nuva axe, and how he uses um the 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 Paru shield um in replacement of the Retuka spinner shield, uh. Mitch, you wanted to talk about this mock a bit. So, what are your general thoughts about this? I think this is like a perfect example of what I enjoy out of out of set remakes. Um, I mean, it helps that it uses like a similar color palette to the, the things I like doing, and has like similar design language. But um, I like a lot of what you just said there. Like, it has very similar traits to the set, but they're tweaked in in little ways that make it its own, um, like especially the weapon and the shield, like you said. But um, like the way it uses color is completely different from the set because the the set is being in a uh, Metru build, mm -hmm. um, a lot more focused on like a single color and then using like those silver accents. Um, but here the 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 color organization is just completely different. Um, the like the translucent orange the Almost the everything on this is like a neutral tone, except for those very sparse uses of color. Um, and you have like the torso and the like those um model limbs. They're all like, like the, that whole section is like gray and black, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then all of the silver is just like located on one side of the mock. It's just from his head down to the end of his right arm mm -hmm. um and so it's like he's still armored like the set but he's armored in a much different way like only half of his body has that armor mm -hmm. um and then another detail i like you know, like the way he's done the feet it's just completely different from the set entirely completely original i like the way that he's used this part to almost look like they're like rocks it's almost like lava like molten lava that's hardened mm -hmm. so he he has like a robotic feel but also an elemental feel to him at the same time and it just it just creates like a very distinct look that I've, I've never quite seen a toa that looks like it but it's still obviously visually recognizable as a toa yeah for sure i i like also that i, I and again i'm not sure if this is the intent but I, I seem to remember like the original character when they were talking about like oh what is spears it was called like a lava spear so now it's like okay instead of making this like your generic like fire thing you've actually got like the rocks with the lava flowing out of it uh, i thought that was a nice touch that kind of links to the character again i don't know if that was the intention of the uh, of what, what ari was doing when he was making it but I, I i like it regardless i think it's very interesting mm -hmm. uh before we move on to the uh the the last section which is going to be our, the questions from audience uh we want to mention the uh this is a, not really a revamp but it's uh it sort of is a revamp it's uh marco's uh noodle arm tahu is um, cause, cause I I'm not sure if this tech technically counts as a revamp because it's, cause it's a representation of like the um Marco's interpretation of the mini build of Tahu that came in the set, uh, mm -hmm. and that in itself is a representation of an existing Bionicle character, but, um, but but what Marco's done is like really scale it up and really go whack with like how he interpreted the designs mainly because uh of the the macaroni two pieces. Which he you he which he shows with the the much larger variant, uh, and really like making the limbs elongated, uh, but even then it's like with the design of the the mock is like it's so different from like, uh, what it's supposed to be based off of because you see with its uh digital grade legs as well as its like, almost eldritch looking head, uh, he's really like it it it's it's about like you know going really off of that spectrum of like. 
um, faithful versus really out there. If 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 it was like to be rated on the spectrum, it would like go way past beyond like the 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 the, the out there spectrum a part of the spectrum. Yeah, 100%. I would agree. Yeah, I really like that one just because it's it's so weird, but it's like still got those little things that remind you of the original. Yeah, like the last really goofy. <laughs> you know, much like the 90th anniversary. Yeah. Tahoe. I also like how it's, and you, you mentioned like it's goofy, yeah, but it's also got like the. If you look at it like uh, like the individual sections, it's built like something. I guess someone can think of something serious, where you like like that those super mechanical detailed mocks, but then it's like ends up being this goofy noodle arm mech thing. I I, I like the juxtaposition there. I think it's a yeah, lot of fun. There's there's almost like a tongue in cheek kind of irony to how it's yeah. made. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So big fan of that one. Shall we move on to questions? Yes, let's. All right. So, uh, first one that I'm going to focus on is from Gylox Toa of Water Nine on Instagram. That's if you have a favorite part you like to use in the mod. Um. So I guess I'll start with that one. Uh, that would absolutely 100% be Technic cams. I think I put them on. I go. I almost go out of my way to use them on everything. Um. Useful. A lot of times, it's actually like where I start building something is I'll just like grab some Technic cams and mm -hmm. like make some quick internals, and then just kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. Can't How relate. You? Can't relate. Don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> that's rough. Yeah, that that that's rough, buddy. Yeah, <sighs> I I've been getting a bunch. From logbook past years. Oh, just just I'm rub it in, why don't you? I'm sorry. <laughs> I I'm getting a ton in logbook, so when I yeah. pick that up at Brick Fair, I'm getting I, it's like several hundred, I think. So yeah, I I think I got like fifty of two different colors last time, and I'm like getting starting to run out of like maybe we should maybe we should get another hundred of those. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's what happened to me too. I was like I ordered a ton and went. This will last me, and then, like, I mean, it has lasted me, but I am running low on them, and I'm like, I'm going to get a couple hundred of these instead, and I hope that will last me a lot longer. Yes. That's what I said about ball joints, the, like, the through-hole ball joints. I'm like, yeah, I have, like, 200 of those. That'll be enough. And I'm like, I'm out now. I don't I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> yeah, I whew, I can't even remember how many of those I ordered. I think I ordered, like, 500 of those, just to be I sure. I wouldn't say those are my favorite, though. Back, Ezra, though, we, we, we can't. We went off topic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, favorite man you see it isn't a can oh okay <laughs> you see the cop-out answer would probably be exoforce arms because i literally use that on like everything um yeah. and i bet a lot of people do as well it's sort of things yeah. like fingers rib cages yeah. toes what have you um i mean i have been starting to use a lot more flex tube when designing mocks because it gives like a real natural design and look to the it gives a natural flow to a mock, whereas like you, more more like technic based stuff would be a lot more stiff in design. But mm, I don't think I've used it enough to classify that as my as my favorite part. Mm -hmm. mm, God, mm. I'm looking back through all the oh you know what I I my favorite part is probably uses dino tails. Um, yeah, I was gonna. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I spam like Dino Tails at every chance I get. Uh, just because they're just they're so useful, the, the curvature and just the smoothness of how they look. They can be used for pretty much anything. They can be used for tails, you know, as the name implies of the part. Uh, used as tentacles, tendrils, tongues. Uh, I have in one of my bio cup entries, I used it as like the 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 stalk of a flower for my prelim entry. Um, I used it on my Vaki to represent those downward pieces of the the head. Uh, I don't know, man. There's just there's just something so useful about having dino tails that is like if like if you can, if it fits with the aesthetic of your mock, it's definitely gonna help uh, contribute to how how the god uh contribute to like the details of the the whole thing. I've uh I've come around recently, and this is a specific like a specific one that you wouldn't probably notice from anything I make, but the three length 
lightsaber bars. I find those super useful, and I wish I had more. I, I, I mean, I, I have a bunch, but, like, there's... I, I use those in so many things now, because, like, the four long ones are good, but, like, the three ones, I just find, like, they're really good for, um, like, smaller things. Like, you can use them to add mechanical details, like pistons. Um, You can use them for, like... I use them for reinforcing things that are made of system bricks a lot, so, like, you'll... Like, the studs with the through holes, or, like, uh, the Travis bricks running them through there whenever I make, like, arms with those. I find them super useful for that. I find myself using them all the time. I know it's not a very exciting piece, but I think they're they're great, and I'm really glad we have them. Uh, if you wanted one that was a little more exciting, uh, it's kind of like flex tube, but the fiber optic cables from Exoforce and other lines, I find those really useful too for like a flex tube adjacent thing, just because they're a lot more flexible. Um, so you can make like spiraling shapes them a little bit more easily, though they sometimes are too wide around there, which means they won't fit through some things for whatever reason. Both of those are some of my favorites. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, next question. All right. Um, these two are from, I really should have written this down on our, on our note sheet. Yeah, they're, um, they're from HB Bluetooth, I believe. Yeah, so he's got two. Uh, first one I want to do is, do you guys think that construction works as purely system? And the examples he gives for that were Groot, Iron Man, uh, various different mechs, like um, the Marvel mechs or the Ninjago, like Evo mechs, stuff like that. Yes and no, because like, to my understanding, construction is the term the Lego group used internally to describe like specifically parts mm -hmm. that were used for making action figure characters things like like, like yeah. ccbs and like gen one bionicle um like even though it's an offshoot of technic you know mm -hmm. they stopped branding in this technic really quickly yeah um, and i'm guessing about the time because they stopped branding this technic in 2002 and i'm guessing that's when they started because they had started making galador they wanted right. to have a different internal use like internal name for that those kinds of pieces um, so, like, purely system sets, probably not, but then at the same time, they're also using parts that, like, were designed for larger scale action figure things. Like, like think of what um, Exoforce did for building these, like, large scale action figure sets. Um, and, like, like, they were built off Knight's Kingdom 2 buildable figures, like mm -hmm. the pieces from those. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, but then they started moving into using ball joints that were designed to incorporate with system. And then, you know, after Exoforce, um, we have stuff like Ninjago now, um, which is kind of like built off of the foundation that Exoforce laid. Um, so the term construction probably a little mu like muddied at this point, like muddled at this point. But I pro personally, I probably wouldn't. But it's not that it's any less legitimate. It's just, I don't know if I would call it construction. Um, I know they're calling the new Ninjago match like the SCCBS. Um, yeah. So, I mean, those are a little, what, what the Lego group calls that internally, I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So, yeah, there's my long wind answer of yes and also no. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think I mentioned this before when we were talking to Ben about this, but, um, I I think that buildable figures and using system is definitely a very real possibility. I think right now with what the way Lego builds things, it's challenging to make things like look good while still being stable while using system, which is like I think a huge benefit of the old construction systems is that you can have those really large specialized pieces that provide posability and stability. Whereas with system there are ways to do it. Uh, it just can be a little bit challenging. So I, I think it's there. I think it's definitely possible. Obviously, with the, with mocks, it's very very possible if you if you aren't super super focused on perfect uh, durability. But uh, I think with Lego sets that there's still um, some ground that needs to be covered to like really get to the capability that old construction had, but using system. I think that the those SCCBS stuff are get are moving that direction, uh, and I like the way they're moving. I'd love to see another character building line of some sort eventually. Uh, well, you know, we we, we the the fact that construction is, is the abbreviation for constructible action figure. I guess for in terms of like with the system, like the new 
sort of system built characters with the the aforementioned Groot and Iron Man and the the latest wave of Ninjago Max. Um it's 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 kind of hard to like place it because while yes they they do fall under the technical term of construction, they are not like you 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 could build like you could like the Lego community could always like build like all these different uh, mechs and and characters out of all these system pieces and it was they would like label it as construction but you know to the community they at heart know that this isn't construction this is not what you know it's supposed to be um and like even even on to like on that it's even for me who and for anybody else who uses a lot of system in their works and you can see in the community that people have shifted to more system focused stuff in their mocks where like almost half of the mock is made completely completely with system as opposed to using construction pieces like hero factory bones gen one uh, limbs um you you could i guess consider some parts as uh like the the socket bricks and the ball joint bricks as technically construction or like a merging of like system and construction but like honestly that's probably as far as it goes on the uh at, that's as close as system could probably get to being labeled as construction whereas the rest of it is just oh it's just bricks and it's like generally if it has a stud on it it's generally considered system if it's blocky and it has a stud on it all right uh next question this one this one i'm definitely curious to hear what your guys thoughts are uh is uh, also by hb creates um Thoughts on people saying construction mocks are becoming homogenized stylistically or like just generally kind of looking the same across the board? What are your guys' thoughts on this? So I guess it really depends on like what 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 he means by um, being like homogenized stylistically is like uh, generally like with the mentioned before is like a lot of people, they're I guess sort of building in a similar style uh, where they've included a lot more system into their builds um, as well as like uh, some other stuff. But I generally don't think that, you know, that the mo mocks these days are being homogenized necessarily. Yes, you could say that uh, some mocks will look similar to each other in terms of techniques and how they're built or the aesthetic that they're going for. But I think a lot of people generally have enough of a distinct building style where that they can take like a similar concepts, but execute them very differently. And it's all of depending on the, you know, the builder's perspective. And then, as I mentioned in, I'm, it's either this podcast or the podcast we, we did with Ben, it's like, you know, p different people will have different views. Um, when it comes to building, like you, like example, like in, bio cup or any tournament you could give people like the exact same like sub theme exact same category and they'll build the mock in completely different ways because you know no one builder has the exact same way of building they don't see um a concept the same way we might uh like you know with the with the mock league that you and i did miss up is like okay here's your theme it's gore like make a gore mock and then the stuff we produced is completely different from each other despite using like similar color scheme similar um pieces and and just like we had like almost similar ideas but you know they went in completely different directions from each other so no in that sense i don't necessarily think that the uh, mocks as of recent have become homogenized yeah, I don't, I don't see it myself. Like, yeah, there's a lot of people who, like, all talk and share ideas with each other, and naturally they're going to make things that are somewhat similar, just because like they're the people who are, like, interacting. Um, but like, people still have distinct visual styles. Like, even if, like, you can scroll through any BioCup group, and you know by default it's not going to show you people's names, but just looking at some of these photos, you can tell who made what. Like, I can tell which one of, like, which mocks were made by Arrow, or like, which ones were made by Ari, or mm -hmm. Velocijector, right? Like, I know, I have a, and I, I can tell who made what based on like how they built things. And even though they all have the same, like, they all have an understanding of the same fundamentals, they apply them differently, right? And ultimately, that's kind of what matters the most is having an understanding of the basics 
and then you know using your understanding of the basics to make something that is distinctly yours yeah i i would agree um i think that uh like i kind of get where some people are coming from if they say like oh a lot of mocks end up looking the same and that there's a lot of techniques that are becoming more commonly used that weren't used in the past that might like like flex tube heart spam stuff is i i i feel like i see a lot more of those now than i did a few years ago however at the same time like uh I just see that as kind of like a expansion of what was already there because like you've got people that still make construction mocks that are like in the style of G1. You've got people that make construction mocks in the style of Hero Factory and G2. You've got people that fuse those two. You've got people that fuse system with those. Um, and then like you've also got people that are like covering various different subject matters where instead of just Bionicle, which I feel like so many there were so many years where Bionicle mocks just looked like Bionicles. Um, and now we've got ones that are using like bionicle parts and construction parts to make just so many things like plants, animals. If you're, I'm just thinking of bio cup, just kaiju, um, just so many different character designs that are completely like completely different from what's in the past. I I kind of see things as becoming like expanding now. In addition to what you guys also said about like everyone having their own style, so I would say no. Um, I kind of understand when people say that like i know where they're coming from but i just don't agree so well like anything else it's going to have like waves where certain things are popular like right, right. in 2018 it was somewhat popular to like start reincorporating galador mm -hmm. um and that's become a bit more accepted it's not the right word because it was not like it was ever unaccepted but um like it's more common to see galador pieces now than it was before 2018 just because it was something of a trend right um right and like trends come and go in creative mediums like this so you're probably going to be seeing things that look similar to others and when people are like learning fundamentals like they're going to be copying other people's work like i have plenty of my own mocks that i can look at and go oh that was inspired by someone else that looks like someone else had built it, right? And and um, uh, sorry, just uh, just back piggybacking off that, it's kind of like uh, that's kind of the vibe I got when I saw um, Calcifer's entry for the for for the this year's Bio Cup his prelim entry because like when I saw it, I thought like, wow, this looks like something that Patrick would make because it is very it has techniques and it has a, a similar aesthetic to what something that he would make. So I was kind of, it really caught me off guard when I saw that uh, this was the mock that Kelsiver made for his prelim entry. Yeah, like, it's just natural that people are going to be inspired by others and are going to, like, do stuff that is similar to other people, but they can still take those and develop them in their own way. Like, that's pretty much how anyone starts. You know, you emulate the things you like until you can start taking it in your own directions. I think that's the the way things are for like any form of art, like painting, photography, movies, anything like that. It's the collection. Anything that someone makes is the collection of their own ideas on top of everything that they've seen before. So there's going to be influences ever of everyone's style, even in the things that are classified as most original. So. Yeah, like I'll I'll always say like originality isn't in what you do; it's how you do it. Like. Everything's been done before, so what makes what makes something original is in your own personal voice. Hmm. I would agree. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, that I feel like that's a pretty good point to close on. So, um, wrapping things up, do you guys want to share where people can find you on Instagram and Flickr? Yeah, <laughs> you know the usual. <laughs> you, yeah. you you can find me. Uh, Ezreal the Boomer Mock is on Instagram and Ezreal on Flickr. I'm on Flickr. It's just my name, Mitch Henry. Um, the username is underscore CZQ underscore. And then on Instagram, it's Mitch Henry CZQ underscores between all of those. Um, and that's, those are the two main places where I, I post my mocks. So. And can find for... me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And you can find me at my snail eats pizza on Flickr or my snail eats pizza one on Instagram. And if you guys have any other questions, things related to the podcast, you can email us at partspinpod at gmail.com. 
or just message one of us on Instagram. So uh, thank you for joining us today, Mitch. Uh, yes. Interesting, interesting topics. I, just, uh, I feel like I got a, in, a lot of insights out of the conversation. I'm um, glad you, you could have been here. So thanks. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, and thanks again, Ezreal, thanks for, for doing me. this. See you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.